What's up YouTube? We're going to keep this little series going about living with the 911. I know the video is talking about the top five things you hate about a car are pretty popular right now. There's not really anything I hate about the car, but there's definitely a few things I like to change about it. So let's talk about that for a little while. The hill hold feature. So if you guys don't know, the hill hold feature keeps you from rolling backwards on a hill. It sounds great and it does its job, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I don't know about you, but when I'm driving a manual, I kind of get used to how much throttle I need to give the car when I'm releasing the clutch. The problem with the hill hold feature is you have to give it a little bit more gas to get going or else you'll stall. Now the only thing that indicates that you have the hill hold feature engaged is this little tiny green button on the dashboard. If it's bright outside, you don't see that light. And you don't see it most of the time in the nighttime either. So you try to get going, you stall the car, you're sitting there, you're embarrassed. Likely the car automatically starts itself as soon as you press the clutch back in. Except you've got sports exhaust on because you always have sports exhaust on. And when the car restarts, everybody from three blocks away hears you. So now you're even more embarrassed. But I know what you're saying. Adam, why don't you just turn it off? Well, internet, that's because you can't turn it off. The guys over at Porsche, they don't think we know how to pull out while on a hill in a manual transmission. So they don't even give you the option to disable it. It would be nice if we had a button to push that we could use to just turn it off. But that's a little bit too much to ask now, isn't it? Speaking of pushing buttons, every time you get in the car, you have to turn on sports suspension, sports plus, sports exhaust, whatever it is you want. They automatically turn off every time you turn the ignition off. It's a minor gripe, but I really wish the car would just remember the settings I use it on because I hardly ever change them and just have it that way when I start the car up. I was really hoping Porsche would fix that with a little knob on the 991.2, but apparently they've even made it worse on my car. At least it remembers to keep the auto stop off because I don't ever use that. But on the 991.2, that apparently has to be turned off every time you get in the car now as well. I've heard some people say that they feel like they're in a race car when they drive this car and they gotta hit all the buttons every time they get in it. I just wanna get in the car, start it, and go. Another issue I have, the cruise control stalk. This isn't exactly a, a Porsche problem. This is present on all German cars, but they put the cruise controls on this little stalk hidden underneath the wheel on the left side that you can't see. So you're fumbling around, you're trying to figure out how to operate this thing, you push them forward, push them back, and it's, you never know what it's doing because you can't see the labels. Now this is something that American cars got right a long time ago. They have all their cruise control features on the steering wheel. In plain sight, clearly labeled, easy to work. Now I'm sure some engineer looked at it and said that it doesn't look good enough to put on a steering wheel and it messes up the aesthetics, eh, which I think is garbage because there's a ton of cars out there that have attractive steering wheels and they still have the controls right there where you can see them. So after time you do get used to it, you learn how the stalks work and it's not so bad until you get into a different car. I've got three different cars from three different German manufacturers and each system is different. Some you push forward to go faster, some you push up to go faster. It's just a little bit annoying that you have to relearn each system every time you get in the car. I know I've talked about the cup holders in a previous video. It is kind of annoying that stuff spills all over your buttons every time you have a drink there. But I bet I could count on one hand how many times I've actually used the cup holders. The other times they're just stored away in the dash, nice and neat, out of sight, looks good. It's kind of a stupid place for them when they're in use, but when they're not in use, it's great to hide them away. So I'm going to put those in the neutral bin. Now I've heard a few people complain about the e-brake in this car. Not that we don't have an old-fashioned lever, but that the button is backwards. A lot of people were saying that you should pull the button out to set the brake and push it in to release it. The Porsche is designed the exact opposite of that and I agree with it. If anybody has driven an old-fashioned American pickup truck, you know that to set the emergency brake in those cars, you push in a pedal on the left and to release it, you pull the little lever out. So it just kind of makes sense to me to have that system designed the way it is. But I grew up in the country and that's what I learned to drive on was those old pickup trucks. I bet you won't hear a lot of Porsche owners say that. The last thing I dislike about the car is also one of my favorite things about the car the motor. More specifically, the lack of torque in the motor. Above 4,500 RPMs, the thing pulls really nice. So the power comes on progressively. You can feel little steps where it kicks just a little bit. It, I like that. Don't get me wrong. But down low, there's just nothing there. I cut my teeth drag racing Mustangs and other American V8s. And I can't lie. 
I miss that feeling getting thrown into the back of the seat. With my next car, I'm sure I'll get something that fills that void. Maybe another 911 with a couple turbos strapped to it. That should do the trick. Alright guys, I wanted to thank you for watching. We really appreciate all the comments and all the feedback. We've got a ton of great content on the way, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. If anybody has a suggestion about a video idea or wants to know anything about the car, leave me a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Until next time, thanks guys.